Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Ki Jai. So today is a uh, disappearance day of the spiritual master who, or actually the great soul who played the spiritual master's part as Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. So that is Ishwara Puri Prabhu, um, Ishwara Puri. And so I'll read a little bit about an interchange between Ishwara Puri and his spiritual master, Madhavendra Puri. Now this is very instructive. As devotees, we can learn a lot, a lot from this little bit of interchange here. Hmm. Uh, Madhavendra Puri Omagyan to Midandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militamina Tasmai Shri Gudavina Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pucharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Vebhacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shivasiri Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Madhavendra Puri is a, a very exalted personality, extremely exalted. In comparison to all great souls, he is way beyond all of them. He's actually a personality who descended from the spiritual world to do this role as bringing Srimati Radharani's worship into the Sampradaya. Before then, Krishna was worshipped. And so, by his arrangement, of course, he was in the Madhva Sampradaya, and by his realization of Sri Vrindavan Dham, because his, his identity in the spiritual world is he, he is a Kalpa Viksha tree in the spiritual world. That means there are trees in the spiritual world, as Prabhupada would say, that you can go to those trees and you can get anything you want from that tree. And in the material world, we go to a particular tree to get a particular type of fruit or some, something particular that is connected to that tree. But in the spiritual world, the trees are chintamani. They're purely spiritual. And therefore, they can fulfill all the desires of the living beings in the spiritual world upon request. So Prabhupada would say, you can go to these trees and ask anything you want, and immediately it is provided. So that one of those trees incarnated in this world as Sri Madhavendra Puri. So in one place it says that the... Deep mellows of Krishna, the, the, the loving affairs between Radha and Krishna are on the highest level of spiritual understanding. And no one can understand them. There are only four people who can understand them. Krishna, Srimati Radharani, Lord Chaitanya, and Madhavendra Puri. So he is cl ca classified and categorized as a person who is so exalted. Now he appears in the spiritual world, in the material world, sorry, as the grand spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He has two prominent disciples, or two disciples that we know about. One is Ishwara Puri, and the other one is um, Ramachandra Puri. Both of these were disciples of Madhavendra Puri. Now, when Madhavendra Puri was getting old, he became quite unable to take care of his own needs and bodily functions. So he required help from his assistants, his disciples. 
So it's explained that in his last days of ecstasy, he was calling out to Krishna in pure separation. When his disciple, Ramachandra Puri, heard his spiritual master, Madhavendra Puri, calling in that way, he immediately thought there was something wrong. And so he started to instruct Madhavendra Puri by saying, why are you crying? Compose yourself, control your senses, and fix your mind on Brahman. <laughs> That's the worst thing he could have possibly said. <laughs> Madhavendra Puri is in ecstasy. He's thinking of Krishna, and he's thinking of Krishna in separation from Krishna. His heart is feeling so much longing to be with Krishna that he's exper experiencing ecstatic love for Krishna in that mood. And here's his disciple saying, yeah, just control your mind, fix your mind on Brahman. <laughs> Madhavendra Puri turned to his disciple and he said, get out of here. <laughs> if I see your faith as the time of death, I don't know what my destination will be. <laughs> and so Ramachandra Puri lost the favor of his spiritual master. And because of that, his material desires started to return. And after that, he became critical, a very critical, of all the devotees, especially even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would find fault with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But there was another disciple, that was Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri, I'll read some of the services he used to do for his spiritual master. Ishwara Puri, the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, performed service of Madhavendra Puri, cleaning up his his stool and urine with his own hands. Ishvara Puri was always chanting the holy name and pastimes of Lord Krishna for Madhavendra Puri to hear. And in this way he helped Madhavendra Puri remember the holy name and pastimes of Lord Krishna at the time of death. So now he's assisting his spiritual master and his mood of ecstasy and separation from love of God. That is the highest service a disciple can perform. Pleased with Ishwara Puri, Madhavendra Puri embraced him and gave him the benediction that he would be a great devotee and lover of Krishna. Thus Ishwara Puri became like an ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna, whereas Ramachandra Puri became a dry speculator and a critic of everyone else. So you see, when one pleases the spiritual master, and especially in the way that Ishwari Puri did, then the path of devotional service is so, it's wide open. It becomes so natural and so easy that one traverses quickly to the highest stage of love of God. And the converse is also indicated here that when one offends or disobeys the spiritual master, causes some difficulty, then one loses the mercy of the spiritual master. And when one loses the mercy of spiritual master, they can't get the mercy of Krishna. Yasya prasada, Bhagavad prasada, Yasya prasadan, Nagati kutopi. When the spiritual master is pleased, Krishna is pleased. And when the spiritual master is not pleased, then Nagati kutopi. <laughs> In other words, one cannot make any advancement. So here is the here is actually the essential principle that makes up the success of bhakti. By simply trying to please the spiritual master, learning how to please the spiritual master. What, how does the spiritual master please? What is the most important thing, or what, what is the most important thing that you can exhibit in trying to please the spiritual master? Easy. Become Krishna conscious. <laughs> when the spiritual master is seeing his devotee making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness, he becomes very pleased. Because that means his service to Krishna is becoming successful. And that makes him very happy. And therefore he bestows more and more mercy on that disciple. And then their path to devotional service becomes easier. But we can also do services that were 
very pleasing to the spiritual master. I'll give you an example how it works. These are rare cases, but it shows how the mercy of the spiritual master can take a situation and completely turn it around. Where there was one very exalted sannyasi in our movement in the early days, and he was very enthusiastic, very humble, and he helped to open up a few of the areas that became yatras and places where Srila Prabhupada's preaching expanded more and more. So he did wonderful service for Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was very pleased with him. But as time went on, especially after the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada, somehow he got into bad association. And because of that bad association, he started taking up his old habits again, and which were drugs. They start using drugs, and not only drugs, but heavy drugs, very addicting drugs. And so he went through a stage of completely forgetting Krishna consciousness and engaging in sinful activity and becoming more and more degraded through intoxication. Finally, he received the news that he got terminal cancer and he was going to die. So he, of course, obviously, there was nothing that could save him. And so he started to again remember his spiritual life. And at that time, Prabhupada was gone. And so he decided to come back and associate with the devotees. And the devotees were there and they welcomed him back and tried to take care of him as much as they could in his last few days. And as time went on, the cancer became more and more spread throughout his body, and it was, we was just waiting for the time when he would leave. He was sitting, or he was laying in his bed, and this is described by some senior devotees who were there. He's sitting, and now the time of death comes. He's sitting, his eyes get big, he looks at the door, he says, Prabhupada, you've come! And that was the last thing. Prabhupada came to save him the last minute because he remembered all the wonderful service he had done again and he was back in the association of devotees. That's special mercy. So Prabhupada came to take him back to Godhead. Although he had that what we say, fall down for a number of years where he completely gave up Krishna consciousness. So, of course, there's another message here that the Lord never forgets any service a devotee does, even if the devotee does a little bit of service. That service is remembered by the Lord. And that'll always be there to the devotee's spiritual credit. But if one performs an activity that really <coughs> pleases the spiritual master. Just like we have the example of Bhakti Tirtha Swami, who risked his life to preach behind the Iron Curtain. So many times his life was in danger, and uh, many times he was about to be arrested or killed, preaching in communist Germany, preaching in what was now, what is now Czecho and Slovakia, at that time was Czechoslovakia. He was preaching there. Um, I think he also came to Hungary and preached there. Poland, definitely he was in Poland. So he was preaching in areas where you couldn't preach, and if you got caught you would be arrested or maybe even executed. But he wanted to do something wonderful to spread Krishna consciousness, and so he did. After his success, he returned to America. No, actually it was London. And Srila Prabhupada was in London. And uh, Prabhupada was getting letters from him. And Prabhupada was always also trying to write back to him. And then Tamal Krishna comes walking into the room, Tamal Krishna Goswami, and and, Pro, and Bhakti Tirtha Swami, whose name was at that time Ganisham Priya, that was his name, Ganisham, Ganisham. He said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, your Ganisham, he has come. <laughs> he 
And Prabhupada immediately got up from his desk and walked over, and something he hardly ever did, he only did it once or twice, he gave him an embrace. He embraced Bhakti Tirta Swami and he said, your life is perfect. <laughs> As Prabhupada knew, he, he risked his life to preach in areas where no one could actually go without having to, you know, risk their life in order to do Krishna consciousness. But he did it, and he was successful, and he came out, and Prabhupada blessed him in such a wonderful way. So we see from that incident that uh, how when one does something outstanding for the spiritual master, and one should try to do something in such a way that Prabhupada said, take a little risk for Krishna. <laughs> it's not that you have to run to Ukraine right now, <laughs> but if you did, it would be great service. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you do, because if you don't come back, I'll be blamed for encouraging you to go. So that's not my program. But what I'm trying to use as an example is that, that, that the pleasure of the spiritual master is the secret or the ingredient for success in devotional service. And of course, the spiritual master is pleased when he sees you becoming Krishna conscious, or he sees you developing those qualities which are conducive to the execution of devotion. In other words, you're developing nice spiritual qualities. That pleases the spiritual master. So here, we'll go on with this reading. Thus, Ishwar Puri became an ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna. Uh, we read that. Whereas Ramachandra Puri became a jai speculator and a critic of everyone. Ishwar Puri received the blessings of Madhavendra Puri, whereas Ramachandra Puri received a rebuke from him. Therefore, these two persons, Ishwar Puri and Ramachandra Puri are examples of the objects of a great personality's benediction and punishment. Madhavendra Puri instructed the entire world by presenting these two examples. So he's instructing all of us in that, that here is this success in Krishna consciousness. His divine grace. Madhavendra Puri, the spiritual master of the entire world, thus distributed ecstatic love for Krishna while passing away from the material world. He chanted this verse. I'll read this verse. This is a famous verse. There was one very close friend of mine who was a disciple of Radhanath Swami. When this boy, he was about 32 years old, he came down with terminal cancer. Radhanath Swami instructed him, to chant this verse over and over again, in which he did. This verse is Ayi Nanda Daridjanata He Maturanata Kavava Loka Yase Vidayam Twamaloka Kataram Dayita Brahmyate Kim Karoti Aham. The translation is This is a prayer to the Lord. O oh my Lord, O oh my merciful Master, O oh, Master of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Because of my not seeing you, my agitated heart has become unsteady. O oh, most beloved one, what should I do now? That, that verse is, is offered in pure love. <laughs> and then the next verse is, Madhavendra Puri instructed in this verse how to achieve ecstatic love for Krishna. By feeling separation from Krishna, one becomes spiritually situated. Madhavendra Puri, the seed of ecstatic love for Krishna within the material world, then departed. The seed later became a great tree in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I have incidentally, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explained, I have incidentally described the passing away of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri. Anyone who hears this must be considered very fortunate. <laughs> Just to simply hear how he departed the world. And so he left 
one very powerful and great personality, Ishwara Puri. And to become the spiritual master of the Supreme Personality of Godhead <laughs> is something you can't even imagine the quality of such devotion. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Navadvip to go to Gaya to uh, begin his spiritual, his pastimes of taking initiation, he was in one Vishnu temple. When he was in that Vishnu temple, he was offering prayers to a beautiful deity of Lord Vishnu. In comes Ishwar Puri. Ishwar Puri sees Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya sees each other. Their eyes meet and immediately there is a connection. After they could understood that uh, Lord Chaitanya could understood, here is my spiritual master. Later on that day, Ishwar Puri went to see Lord Chaitanya at his place and he came. And Lord Chaitanya immediately fell flat in front of Ishwar Puri and glorified him in so many ways and asked him and explained that one cannot achieve the goal of life unless one is blessed by the mercy of Krishna's pure representative, the bona fide spiritual master. So I have come to seek out your shelter and your mercy. And he prayed. And Ishwara Puri immediately, of course, already in his mind, he was already accepting Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I mean, who could not? <laughs> and um, so at that time, he uh, took initiation from Ishwara Puri. And later on, when he returned to Navadvip, he was a completely different person. Before he was, Nav he was Nimai Pandit, the scholar, who was expert at deb debate, and, um, uh, you know, defeating his opponents. He was known as being the arrogant scholar of Naradweep. He was so learned and no one could defeat him, but he was also arrogant. When he came back, that arrogance was gone. He was humble, very simple. And now he was showing the symptoms of love of God, even when Lord Chaitanya first exhibited this early pastime, he manifested these symptoms. And just a few days after, he called a meeting of all his devotees at the house of Nishringa Brahmachari, and they all came, and they had kirtan. <laughs> and Gadadhar Pandit also came. And Lord Chaitanya went into ecstasy in that kirtan. And at that time, he exhibited so many symptoms of love of God, and that was the first time that the devotees had seen him in that mood before he was simply uh, um, one of the devotees who was a great devotee, but still. But now he was showing all, and he, he was explaining, this is all due to the mercy of my spiritual master. Well, within, with the mercy, there is one particular beautiful prayer. Actually, the prayer applies to Krishna. But without the spiritual master, one cannot make these prayers to Krishna. And he says, my dear Lord, with your mercy, what is the use of anybody else's mercy? And without your mercy, what is the use of anybody else's mercy? In other words, I only want your mercy because your mercy is what will give me the success in life. And that is pure love for you. And so he prays like that. So that, therefore, in order to traverse the past all the way up to perfection, which is the soul's natural constitutional position, is to serve and to love the Supreme Lord, one has to take shelter under the bona fide spiritual master and work in such a way as to focus on how to please the spiritual master. And it's easy to please the spiritual master. It's not very difficult. It's quite easy if one is sincere. That sincerity means meditate, or not, not necessarily meditate, but memorize the instructions of the spiritual master, try to carry them out in, in the best possible way, and think, here's a, here's an, think how I can serve in addition to the instructions. In other words, what else can I do? <laughs> 
And that will bring one to the intelligence where Krishna will give you the intelligence. Oh yes, you want to actually make more advancement, you want to serve better, here's how to do it. So Krishna only not only gives the intelligence, but he also gives you the facility to carry out that desire to increase and to please the spiritual master. So this is the success in Bhakti Yoga. Uh, otherwise, Nagutiku Topi, or, or the verses, Shrama Eva He Kevala. Everything else is a useless waste of time. So we might say, well, I'm not initiated. Can I make advancement? Yes, you can make advancement to the point where you understand you need a spiritual master. That's your advancement. When you come to that pl platform, that means you're making advancement to the point of understanding what is your next step. And when you come to that step and you take that step with faith, and then, uh, then, then, as it says, Prabhupada would say, initiation means beginning. <laughs> We're practicing to begin before initiation, but then when that initiation comes, then we are on the path back home, back to Godhead. And it's just a matter of time before we reach perfection. And it's all due to Krishna's mercy in the form of the spiritual master. Yasya prasada bhagavad prasada, yasya prasada nagati kutopi. But a better, better verse is mukhaṁ uh, karoti vāchālam pangu lagate girim yat kripa tanaham bande shigarum dinatarinam that um, with the mercy of the spiritual master it, nothing is impossible everything is possible and we've seen that in our krishna conscious movement people who have come to our movement and all of a sudden they're doing wonderful service or after some time they're doing wonderful service they can preach they can do so many things they can in other words, they become expert in all the activities of devotional service. And it's all because they took the instructions of the spiritual master to heart and made those instructions their, their main focus in life. And that's where the success is like that. So we each, each and, other, each and other, every one of us has the general instructions which are written in Srila Prabhupada's books. And some of us have specific instructions given by our spiritual masters. But in both cases, one should make, try to make advancement more and more in devotional service by thinking, how can I please the spiritual master? Well, well, that's a meditation. How can I please the spiritual master more and more? And sometimes we say to the spiritual master, give me your mercy. The Prabhupada said, I'm giving. Take. <laughs> it's there. It's like you're standing next to a fruit tree and the fruits are hanging from the branches and you're saying, give me a fruit. Oh, just go pick it. <laughs> it's right there in front of you. <laughs> so that the mercy is always there. But we could lose the mercy by not taking advantage of the mercy. So take advantage of the mercy. And one of the easiest ways and most readily ways to see and understand the mercy of the spiritual master is to work together as devotees in association to push on Krishna consciousness. There's where that mercy becomes thick and what we say readily accessible. So this uh, example here is really, really a, as it says here, uh, Madhavendra Puri it was used by the Lord to show the success in life and the defeat in life. What happened to Ramachandra Puri? He would go to the devotees and he would, they would be sitting down, taking, ready to take prasadam. Immediately he'd, he'd come and he'd want to serve the devotees. So he would take the buckets or baskets and he would serve the prasadam, and he would say, oh, take more, take more. And uh, he would be encouraging. And then after a while he would say, just see, the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they eat too much. He would force them to take more, and then he would criticize them for eating too much. 
And then, this is critical nature was prominent, and then he would see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Vishwambar. That means he can eat the whole universe. <laughs> it's not a problem for him. <laughs> and he can still, you know, be hungry. <laughs> So he, he performs these activities as a, as a devotee of the Lord, but he's accepting the mercy of his devotees by accepting their, their gifts of prasadam. Just like we have one example where uh, Govinda, Lord Chaitanya's uh, personal servant, he came to Lord Chaitanya's mind was disturbed. He said, my dear Lord, you know, the devotees are giving me so many gifts of prasadam for you, and every time I go to give it to you, you say, put it in the room. And now the room is full, and the devotees are asking, did he like what I make? Was it okay? They're all asking. And Lord Chaitanya said, just bring it. <laughs> so, he brought everything in the room, and the room was full, <laughs> and he ate everything <laughs> in, one, in one sitting. I mean, that's Lord Chaitanya, he's, the, he's God, <laughs> so he can do that. So when he would sometimes accept prasadam, he would eat a lot, just to please the devotees. And so when uh, Ramachandra Puri saw that, he would say, Look at this sannyasi. He's bogus. He eats too much. Not only that, I know for sure at night, he keeps sweets hidden. And he wakes up in the middle of the night and he eats sweets. Just see, there's ants on the floor. We can see. Prabhupada said, there's ants everywhere in India. Yeah, so. But he would find reasons to find fault that were not really reasons, but he would make up these reasons. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took it seriously because Ramachandra Puri is the godbrother of his spiritual master. So he was accepting the godbrother because it says you should also honor the godbrother of your spiritual master as much as you honor your spiritual master. That's also a principle. And so, he didn't say anything, but then he was thinking, I'm getting criticized. So he decided to cut his prashadam in half. And then he cut it in half again. <laughs> and he was eating hardly anything. And the devotees were thinking, oh my God, this is too much. <laughs> this Ramachandra Puri is ruining everything. Now Lord Chaitanya is not eating what we're offering. And this is worse than hell. So they couldn't really feel happy trying to serve him. And the Lord would say, no, he's right. <laughs> he would say that. And then the devotees were just praying, I hope he leaves. <laughs> and after some time, he left Navadweep and he was never to be seen again. <laughs> so here's an example. He went on to criticize his spiritual master, then he went on to criticize the devotees, and he went on to criticize the Supreme Lord himself. And after that, his spiritual life was nil. So, um, again, when he lost the mercy of the spiritual master, as is explained, the material desires returned. So that can happen if we lose the mercy of the spiritual. In other words, if we commit a major offense and we're not taking time to rectify that offense, or not sorry for that offense, we go on like it doesn't really matter, and we do the same thing again, then after a while, material life looks good again. <laughs> it looks really good. And then spiritual life looks like something that's just, you know, I'm not interested anymore. And that happens by losing the mercy of the spiritual master. So that was an example that Madhavendra Puri taught to the entire world that here is what you should avoid and here is what you should try to emulate, which you should try to follow, try to please the spiritual master. The spirit, you know, if you give the spiritual master some cookies or some crackers or you tell him 
how nice he looks, or you say Hari Bon, you smile, that's nice. Or on his Vyasa Puja day, you give him a nice gift. All these things are appropriate and, we might say, proper for a disciple to perform. But that's not really what pleases the spiritual master. <laughs> he's pleased by that, but he's really pleased when he sees that you're making advancement in Krishna consciousness. When you're taking the process seriously, when you're serving the devotees, and when you're enthusiastic to chant the holy names of the Lord. These are the things that the spiritual master looks for in the disciples. Like that. So, yeah, so this is very instructive in our Krishna consciousness, this particular pastime. And today, as we said, is the disappearance day of Ishwara Puri. There's one place, I don't know, remember where exactly it is, but it's the birthplace of Ishwara Puri. We went there many years ago, and there's a huge, now it's a pond, but before it was a hole in the ground, big hole in the ground. One day, Lord Chaitanya came to that place, he scooped up some dirt from that place, he said, this dirt is the most valuable thing in the world, and he ate it. This was the dirt from the place of the birth of Ishwar Puri. So since then, people come and scoop up dirt, and they, they, they took so much dirt, now it became a big hole in the ground, and they made a pond out of it, they made a kund out of it. I was there, I saw it, and I said, I can't believe it, how much dirt they actually took. People were just coming year after year and just taking dirt from that place. I don't know if they were eating it, but Lord Chaitanya did. <laughs> just to show that, you know, the, the birthplace of the spiritual master is, is also a holy place, a very special holy place. Like that. Okay, so today is his disappearance day, and uh, because uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we want to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so therefore we recognize and hear the glories of his spiritual master. How dear the spiritual master is to the disciple, and especially in this case, how dear Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master is to him. So by hearing the glories of Madhavendra Puri and Ishwara Puri, we get the special mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, thank you. Uh, I think we have maybe a few minutes. Is any questions or comments? Anything related to guru-disciple relationship? That would be a topic. Yes, Magendra? He should. <laughs> Sleeping late's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. It says you should rise at least an hour and a half before sunrise. But in the winter, sunrise is so late, so... <laughs> I don't know if I want to use that right now for any instructions, but... <laughs> Yeah, so it says that yeah, the early morning hours are conducive to sadhana, meditation, prayers, chanting, worship, study, reading. The later parts of the day are conducive to active service, and the evening is conducive to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and especially kirtan. 
Kirtan is very important in the evening time because that's when the mode of ignorance is the strongest. And therefore, Kirtan will drive away that mode of ignorance fast. <laughs> so, yeah. So the early morning hours are very conducive to the practice of spiritual life. So rise early. Actually, if you get up early, of course you have to have enough rest, and therefore you should not stay up too late. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, every hour you sleep before midnight is worth two hours after midnight. And basically he said, try to take rest by 10 o'clock. <coughs> <coughs> the latest. But Prabhupada, Prabhupada would take rest around 10.30 every night, but he would get up around 12.30, so I don't know if you can do, you can do that. <laughs> but uh, staying up really late at night is just a waste of time, and it destroys your morning sadhana. Yeah. What do you do that time? You have nothing to do, so you just, you know, kind of like fiddle around just to... You know, but that's the motive. The mode of ignorance is is like that. Best to have, best to hear and chant the glories of the Lord in the evening time. That's why Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He writes this that in all our temples around the world, there should be three hours of kirtan every evening in every center. <laughs> that's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in one purport. So yeah, kirtan is especially recommended in the evening time. Of course, we can also discuss Krishna Kata is another form of kirtan, so that is also kirtan, but specifically Harinam Sankirtan, kirtan. In the morning, it is very good for worship, for prayer, for meditation, like that. Yes, there's a question way in the back there. Thank you everyone for the lecture. Uh, I want to ask you about this, uh, uh, we call it snowball effect, like Ramachandra Puri instructed his spiritual master or he criticized Lord Chaitanya. And sometimes uh, it may happen some devotees, it, uh, they may uh, like commit some offense and they may commit, uh, may continue to like, keep doing that. It's called the, Call it snowball, yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's not a good snowball, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, sometimes we don't have really friends in Krishna consciousness, or somebody who can, like, who is so merciful and who can warn us and, like, uh, correct us and so. And uh, are, are there any like signs that we can follow? Because sometimes yeah. we are unaware of making an offense. No, you stay like, in association of devotees. <laughs> If you're committing offenses, it's hard to keep the association of devotees because Krishna will push you out if you keep committing offenses and you won't see the value of that association. But if you can somehow or other develop the idea that I need help, I'm making these offenses, I'm making these mistakes, somehow you can recognize you need some mercy. Then come back in the association of devotees and try to serve the devotees. And that'll gradually reduce the effects of the offenses. But try to avoid that because if it's Vaishnava Aparad, it's it can become, what we say, a real major block in your spiritual life. So you can avoid Vaishnava Aparad if you're in the mood of serving. If you're always in the mood of serving, you always find ways to serve, and that way you can become free of it. When you try to enjoy, and sometimes you push that mood of enjoyment, you can also somehow commit offenses. And when you see your mind going where it shouldn't go, bring it back to Krishna. Always watch the mind, because the mind will cheat you at any minute. It can. So keep that, keep diligence against the mind and keep the mind directed in the right way.
Yes, um, Tosi. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, my understanding is that, that uh, Ramachandra, a fully was, uh, uh, believed in Brahman. Uh, is it, uh, Ramachandra fully is impersonalist, I think so. But uh, how is possible uh, that uh, Madhavendra fully have uh, so one disciple? Well, look at us, we all, (laughs) and we're all on that stage. (laughs) Some of us are Brahmavadis, some of us are (laughs) Mayavadis, some of us are (laughs) Karmavadis. I'm not saying anybody in particular, (laughs) but we know our movement is so wide open that we allow anyone to come in and we don't know what is their motivation or what is their goal. Sometimes people come to Krishna consciousness just to increase their, their material success in life. So yeah, it's not unusual that a great spiritual master will have a, you know, we say a disciple that's not up to the standard. But at least he had Brahman, real, Brahman understanding. I don't know if he had Brahman realization. But. but he had a chance to go farther, but he, he didn't. So the movement is very merciful. Any Lord Chaitanya's movement is to give the mercy to everyone and anyone. So anyone who shows a little sincerity can come and practice Krishna consciousness. But then they have to make, they have to develop the consciousness that this process is about developing my relationship with Krishna in devotion. If they forget that and simply try to, I mean, you can be a very good materialist in Krishna consciousness because... That's why this philosophy is dangerous in the wrong hands. <laughs> yeah, because if people, if people with the wrong motivation know this philosophy, they can manipulate material energy very good. <laughs> so yeah, you have to come up to that, you have to make that progress. But Lord Chaitanya is merciful. He allows anyone to come in if they show a little bit of interest, a little bit of devotion. And he tries to fan that. Yeah, he's very kind. (laughs) That's it. I was just reading that last night when I was giving a lecture about your Guru Maharaj. I read that. That the sum and substance of Lord Chaitanya's movement is that who, who's qualified and who's unqualified? Lord Chaitanya doesn't see that. He simply sees here someone is coming forward. So let's give them a chance. Jai Sisi Panchita, oh, no Panchita. Sisi Gornitai, I'm still in Slovenia. Sisi Gornitai Ki Jai. Sisi Panchita for Ki Jai. So thank you. And so we can go on now to the next program, which is Gorarti. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.